as usual, some more boring international matches are going on. I thought there was going to be some fire fireworks, but no, nah, it's it's hell boring. So let's get on with Chelsea news blitz. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a few little bits and pieces to go through. Some interesting conversation I'm pretty sure we're going to have. Let's get stuck into it right away, ladies and gentlemen. First up, there's a lot of talk that's been happening around Trevor Chalaban. I really want to break this down and I want to see how you guys feel about it as well because... There's mixed feelings about this particular player, uh, player. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Conversations have started with clubs interested in Chalaba. Serious chances to leave if the situation remains the same. Wants to play this is from Fabrizio Romano, who further goes on to say, Lukaku is not considering returning to Chelsea. He's not even contemplating it now because he's focused on Inter. Chelsea and Inter verbally discussed already one another one-year loan. First of all, I could care less about Romelu Lukaku. You can stay at Inter Milan as long as you want till death do us apart. Do you know what I mean? There's no reason for you to come back, so I'm not going to waste my time talking about Romelu Lukaku because, for me, he's finished. He's done. Now, in regards to Trevor Chalaba, look, there's mixed emotions for this player. I want to be sensible and balanced about it. First up, let's talk about the play, and then let's talk about this situation. Last season, he broke through. Now, Thomas Tuchel gave him the opportunity. Very rarely do you see a player that was not considered at all and then does really well in the preseason, and then all of a sudden they're in the team, you know, you know contention, contention, you know, to be part of the squad for the rest of the season. So kudos to Trevor Chalaba to be able to do that. That's a fantastic achievement to be able to, you know, break into the the manager's headspace and make yourself a spot there. Obviously, he's been favoured with you know the, the moves away for Zuma, which Thomas Tuchel wasn't who, who he wasn't a fan of. But I feel like as the season started, Chalaba was very good. You know, he was thrown into the deep end against Villarreal in the Super Cup, and he did really well. Probably the standout defender, if I'm being absolutely honest. And then there were other matches where he had to be the main defender because other defenders were injured. I still remember the match against Brentford, where Brentford, the last 20 minutes last season, I think it was the first game against them, they were all over us. And Trevor Chalaba did a very good job alongside, I think there was, there was Christensen who just came back from injury, and I think he had Malang Sa. He did a similar job in, in some of the cup matches as well. But then obviously he got injured around December period or January period. And then post when he came back, he was a little bit iffy. That match against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup where Luis Diaz absolutely tore him a new one. But he still kept his own. He came back second half and he was much better. And this is what started to happen last season in the latter parts of the season. First part of the season, I think it was very good. Scored some goals as well, if you, if you remember. I think it was against... Newcastle might have been, or maybe maybe Leicester. Don't exactly remember, but he scored some goals. I think it might have been Juventus as well. So look, latter part of the season, the, he was he had mistakes, but then he recovered from the mistakes as well. But everyone started to remember the mistakes, and then as the season finished off, fizzled out, sanctions, ownership issues, our mentality was all over the place. And I can't blame Chalaba. He was, along with all the other players, weren't at the optimum level. But I still felt there was enough that I saw from Trevor Chalaba to, to keep him around. You don't, you can't have a season at Chelsea Football Club and then all of a sudden next season you're alone. Yeah, like I, th I think he did decently enough. But this season, for some reason, Thomas Tuchel started not favouring him. And also end of last season as well, there was there was a situation where Thomas Tuchel wasn't favouring Chalaba. But I felt like... A player of Chalaba's caliber, you know, you don't necessarily have to just start him at RCB. You could have also utilized him in the DM position. There were times where he played as the center of the three CBs as well. I think he definitely could have played DM for us. And even now, I still think under Graham Potter, you know, if, if we were to at times switch to a back back to two defenders, you know, fullback, so back four, I suppose, you can utilize someone like Trevor Chalaba. Um, you know, 
Graham Potter is not fixated on three at the back. I know that's his you know, predominant formation, but he's not fixated on it. So I feel like the versatility that Trevor Chalaba has has some value, and he's been now touted around to to you know be be likened in Italy to Inter Milan to AC Milan as well. I'm pretty certain if he was to go, he's going to do well. Now, if we aren't to let him go, I'd rather let him go on a permanent. I don't want any of this, any of these loan situation. If, if let the man just go and do his thing, if we don't believe in him. But I feel like, why don't we believe in him? Like, I don't understand why we have Aspilicueta. Like, as much as I respect him, I love him, Aspilicueta, the, the contract we provided him was unnecessary. And even now, I feel like Graham Potter in January should look at letting go of Aspilicueta. Like, try and see if we can find a suitor, see if Barcelona is interested still, see if Atletico Madrid is interested, see if anyone in, in, in Spain, if, if they're interested. Um, I see no value in keeping Aspilicueta for the time being. And, and under the new regime, by the time January comes around, it's probably high time that Graham Potter finds himself a new leader. A new, you know, it, it only makes sense, a new leader under the new regime. And some of you guys might say, who, who, who would be the new leader? Now, look, short term, I'm thinking probably Thiago Silva, Jorginho for the time being. And then midterm, if, if you were to give someone like a good two to three years stint i'd probably give it to cover but if you're thinking long term now i'm, I'm going to set up for the long term then reese james but i would hold off on reese james for the time being because i feel like he still needs to develop that leadership quality a little bit more there are times where he lashes out on the opposition there's certain things about a lead as an individual player fantastic but as a leader there's few things i think reese james can still learn so that's why i would go with someone like kovacic for the midterm period but if we're not sure then go with the short term and then work yourself up. Jorginho, Silva, Silva definitely is a, is a no-brainer for me. So look, I wouldn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Do you know what I mean? Like we've extended Aspilicueta's contract for two years. If we can let him go in January, we can make some sort of money and I'll keep Chalaba. But ladies and gentlemen, you let me know how, how you feel about the Chalaba situation. Honestly, it makes zero sense to me that we're keeping someone like Aspilicueta and we're letting go of someone like Chalaba. I know there's still going to be issues even if you let go of Chalaba because Wesley Fafana is probably going to be favoured. Uh, there's Kalitu Koulibaly on the right side as well. So, uh, you know, but at least you, you'd think Chalaba has a bit more opportunity if, if someone else left. So that's just my thought on that. But ladies and gentlemen, you let me know. Next up, this is what Cyan Dan Talks Chelsea tweeted out not that long ago. Trossard would jump at a chance to join Chelsea as would Moses Caicedo. Uh, we talked about Tross ideas that we'll touch a little bit on it today as well. I'm told to expect moves for one or two Brighton players over the next two windows. Look, some of you guys were a little bit iffy about the Trossard situation in the last video. I don't understand why. Like, Premier League players and, and movement within Premier League has been very, very success, successful. You look at Man City going for Calvin Phillips. You look at... In, in previous times, Liverpool going after Southampton players and they've worked out really well. And there's been many other situations. You know, Leicester with Angola Kante for us. I know you're going to say Danny Drinkwater. Yes, there's been some odd, odd ones out, but Riyad Mahrez has worked out for uh, for Man City as well. Uh, and there's been plenty other players. Like There's some decent players in West Ham that you guys would have, you know, taken someone's hand off. Like Bowen is, is a fantastic player. Um you know, we talked about Basuma moving into Spurs, Richarlison for Everton. The Trossard is, I feel like, is in that category where moving into a better team is going to perform. So for me, Trossard is a fantastic situation. But Moses Caicedo is another one as well. Big, big player. Some of you guys might be worried that, ah, can we get all of these players from Brighton? Don't forget, Brighton got themselves a new manager. And the new manager could potentially have you know, his own players that he he would think about bringing him in and uh, bringing them in and rightly so when you're a new manager you're going to try and bring in some of your some of your own players similarly with Graham Potter he would probably would like to bring some of the Brighton players that he feels that they can do a great job at Chelsea Football Club and I feel they can Cook Rare has made the move 
Moses Caicedo, why not? Trossard, why not? Here's a little bit more about Moses Caicedo uh, that's going around. Ben Jacobs with his classic thread. Let's go through that. Liverpool's interest in Moses Caicedo is long-standing, dating back to his time at Independiente del Valle. Now, you guys would be so upset if he goes to Liverpool, and you know he would be a success. So, similarly, why not bring him at Chelsea Football Club? The challenge back then was a complicated representation situation with a number of agencies, including Cancha and PSM, claiming to act on his behalf. Further goes on to say, although the fee Brighton eventually paid was low, 4.5 million, and agent fees were high, that put off Liverpool and Manchester United too. Told Caicedo is now very relaxed about his future and release, uh, and will reassess after the World Cup. 4.5 million. I mean, these are the kind of business that Brighton were doing. So I think. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, these, these, uh, you know, Graham Potter and his backroom staff, especially Macaulay, uh, the head, head of recruitment, can do this kind of madness. We don't need to go out there and break the bank, man. We've got to find these gems if we can. Towards the end of the summer window, his representative agreement was running down, which caused a lot of instability and made it difficult for suitors. Kaisuda also still under contract until 2025, and Brighton would love him. Uh, to sign even a longer deal. So at the end of the season, they'll have two more seasons left. Offers are expected in January with several Premier League clubs keeping tabs on situation, including uh, Liverpool FC and Chelsea. Chelsea's current midfield priority is Ajax's Edison, uh, Edson Alvarez, but it remains to see whether Graham Potter and Carl McCauley uh, change that. Carl McCauley, the head of recruitment. Look, Edson Alvarez is, is definitely a very, very good share. Someone like Moses Caicedo can possibly play as an eight. Uh, there's been times where he's been deployed as an eight for Brighton. So definitely as a six, 100% as an eight. We need to revamp that midfield anyway. We've been talking about Jude Billingham. There's talks now. There's been talks about Edson Alvarez since the, since the deadline day, I suppose, in the, in the last transfer window. And obviously Moses Caicedo now with Graham Potter in. So look, we need to clean that situation up big time. Caicedo has admitted nobody would turn down an offer from Chelsea or any other club like that. It'd be a dream to be in the best team in the world, at least last year, he told the Athletic. My dream is to play for Manchester United. Antonio Valencia is an example to follow, obviously being from the Ecuadorian background. But I love it. I love it how you know these Brighton players, you know, when asked you know, if you move to Chelsea, they they would straight up. And then why not? Of course, it's a it's a it's a step step above for them which is fantastic brighton would want at least 50 million and potter's own joking valuation won't help matters if chelsea do enter the race when asked about a reported 42 million bid from liverpool this summer he replied he'd probably get his boots for that from that chairman maybe 100 million i mean yeah graham potter definitely doesn't help the situation by by making those comments um in the last transfer window when apparently liverpool was you know interested in kaiser at 42 million Look, you know, Kaiseido with two years to go and with that much hype and his quality so far has been immense, you'd probably think he's probably going to be more than 50 million. But hopefully we've got a bit of relationship. You know, I feel like Todd Bowley has some form of relationship with the execs in, in, in Brighton. We've got Lewa Colwell there. We've got Billy Gilmore there. Potentially we could send more players down the track. I don't know if there is a bit of a relationship happening there. And... Maybe we can get some discount. Do you know what I mean? Cookerel, we ended up paying 62 million. So, do you know, like, I feel like some, something around 50 to 60 million will do the job with uh, Kaiser. And why not throw in Trossard? If we can get Trossard, who's who's in his last six months of his contract by the time January transfer window comes around, somewhere anywhere between 30 to 40 million for Trossard would be excellent. So, and we could potentially look at some of our youngsters moving there on a loan or whatever the case is. Um, any of the players that doesn't seem to be working out if you want to go to um, Brighton. But then again, they've got a new manager. We'll see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about everything that we've talked about today, especially the Trevor Chalabas situation and also Moses Caicedo. Would love to hear from you guys what your stance is. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you have. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Till next time. See ya.